Hello everyone, this is Robert from Book of Mormon Editions, where we discuss printings, publications, and various editions of the Book of Mormon. I wanted to spend some time on an interesting aspect regarding the Book of Mormon. It seems that this series has gone through a number of physical editions, and even some reviews regarding the 1830 editions and various replicas. However, even before that, Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery had to prepare the text and get it ready for printing in 1829. This is a great story that we'll spend some time on today. So we know that Joseph Smith at the start had a slow process of translating the Book of Mormon from the Golden Plates. Eventually, Emma Smith was a scribe for him, and then Martin Harris offered to help. We know that Martin persisted in asking permission to take the translated pages to his family, and he eventually lost them. This is the long story shortened, and I'll encourage you to research this, as it's one of my favorite stories of the Restoration, because it shows the triumph over adversity and the love that God had for the Restoration. Ultimately, it also resulted in Oliver Cowdery becoming the scribe for Joseph Smith. So, when the original manuscript of the Book of Mormon was finished, rather than giving the original manuscript to the printer, Oliver Cowdery started the process of copying another text called the Printer's Manuscript. Interestingly, the printer's manuscript was made over the course of time, and the printer actually started on the typesetting the first part of the Book of Mormon, even while Oliver was still working on the later parts of the printer's manuscript. So, in 1830, the Book of Mormon was printed using the printer's manuscript as the source document. But even after the 1830 edition, the story doesn't end there. In the mid-1830s, Joseph and Oliver used a copy of the 1830 edition and this printer's manuscript to make the text for the 1837 Kirtland edition of the Book of Mormon. After that, Oliver kept the printer's manuscript until his death in the 1850s. By that time, most of the, since, most of the saints had moved to the Salt Lake Valley, and the printer's manuscript ended up with the Whitmer family. David Whitmer kept the manuscript, and another edition called the Nephite Records was made in 1899 for the Whitmer group from this printer's manuscript. In 1903, the Whitmer family sold the printer's manuscript to the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This RLDS church reviewed it for their 1908 authorized edition. So the printer's manuscript was kept by the RLDS church, and over time, they would reach out to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Salt Lake for cooperation in preservation and imaging. Um, ultimately, in 2017, the RLDS group, now known as the Community of Christ, announced the sale of the printer's manuscript to the Salt Lake Church for $35 million. And now the printer's manuscript rests in the archive of Salt Lake. The church has done a good job in giving access to the printer's manuscript, as they've published images for the Joseph Smith Papers Project. Among the access granted, a commemorative replica was created. This replica is worth reviewing, and I'm excited to include this in today's video. So I did a review regarding a replica 1830s Book of Mormon called the Palmyra Edition Replica, among the website there is a web page offering this 1829 printer's manuscript replica. This is a 24-page folio containing exact image details of various printer's manuscript pages, created for collectors and those interested in the restoration. The pages have a publisher's ribbon and on it for titling and the barcode, and when you take it off, it's the best replica as you can get. Manuscript pages were called fool's cap paper, and when folded in half, it produces a pamphlet of 8 and 1 8 by 13 inches, and this replica matches these measurements. The cover page is an introduction as quoted as the Book of Mormon, an account written by the Hand of Mormon, etc., etc. Um, the first pages inside have an introduction regarding the details of the printer's manuscript and this replica and its context. Often, one page would be handwritten for the text, and then typed text would be cross-referenced on the next page. The I Nephi page, having been born of goodly parents, is amazing, and I don't think I could write that neat, and I'm impressed with Oliver Cowdery's cursive penmanship of the time. It seems that paper back then was a rare commodity, and pages were used to the fullest, 
with very close margin and tight lines. The story of the Savior coming down is listed on these replica pages, and it's really impressive to see these pages included. You can also see marks and some blemishes to pages. Interesting to note that the 1829 printer used a pencil to mark these pages up for, pu for punctuation. As mentioned also, Joseph and Oliver used these pages to make updates to the 1837 Kirtland edition, and so those are shown as well. The back of the pages are the endings of the Moroni chapter 10, with the testimony of the witnesses immediately afterwards. I'm amazed that there's no page breaks between the end of the Book of Mormon and the witnesses section. So all in all, I'm really happy to see this replica and showcase it as part of the printer's manuscript for the Book of Mormon. These, repli or these replica pamphlets can be found at the palmyraedition.com website and often on eBay. I'd encourage others to get it, just to see if you could read the cursive of older times. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Please feel free to subscribe and comment down below if you have seen this printer's uh, manuscript replica. If you have a special or unique edition of the Book of Mormon that you'd like reviewed here, please contact me at bomeditions at gmail.com. Thanks everyone.